Hello, mathematicians. I'm Aiden Gonzalez, and I'm a recently graduated high school math student, and I'm working with Skew the Script on a few of the algebra lessons. Today, we'll be discussing payday loans and whether or not they're helpful or predatory for low-income communities. We'll be analyzing this question through linear equations. Let's skew it. Today, we're gonna to talk about linear equations. This is lesson 2.1 in our algebra course sequence. This is how loans work. A person or an organization lends you money, and after a per period of time, you return that money and a little extra money, which is called interest. Payday loans are a short-term loan that works in a similar way, and you can see signs like these, or you may see signs like these um, near you. Advertised interest rates are interesting to talk about. For credit cards, the advertised interest rates are usually between 12% to 30%, and for payday loans, usually between 15% and 30%. However, according to the Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection, the actual interest rates for payday loans are between 390% and 780%. What's going on here? In today's key analysis, we're gonna be talking about whether or not payday loans are helpful or predatory. As always, you can follow along using our guided notes at the URL below. Let's talk about linear patterns. Back to payday loans, they're fast, cash loans that people take out to make ends meet until their next payday. You pay off the loan at your next payday with interest. They're good because they help people survive after job layoffs, emergencies, or similar situations, but they're bad because they have notoriously high interest rates. This is how they work. Imagine you take out a payday loan for $500. The lender advertises a 15% interest rate to be paid in two weeks, your next payday. You pay the lender back plus some amount in interest. This interest is how the lenders, the payday uh, companies make profit. Calculate the interest in dollar amounts charged for the first two weeks. So we have our 15%, our interest of our initial loan of $500, of indicates multiplication, 15% as a decimal 0.15 times 500 is equal to 75. You owe the initial loan, the 500, plus the $75 interest in two weeks. So you own five, oh, 575 in two weeks. So you give them a check for this full amount, this $575, and the lender will cash it in in two weeks after you get paid so your bank account is full. Two weeks pass, something interesting happens. Your lender says, to be nice, we'll let you roll over your loan. Just give us the $75 and we'll keep your check for another two weeks. This is called a rollover. You can keep rolling over until you can pay your full check. These are really common. According to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, over 80% of payday loans are rolled over and over 60% of loans go through seven or more cycles. There are six or more rollovers. These are really common. Why are these so common? People get payday loans during hard times. They maybe they lost their job, they're going through a financial emergency, et cetera, et cetera. This starts a cycle of debt, rollovers, that is hard to overcome. Even if you get paid and you may not have enough left over for bills, to pay for your house, to pay for clothes, for food, so you keep rolling over your loan. Um, let's complete the table assuming rollovers. So we start with $500. This is our amount owed, our $500 initial um, loan. After two weeks, we pay 75% interest. We calculated this um, a few minutes ago. So after two weeks, we have 575 owed slash paid. This is our full amount on the check. We then pay $75 to roll over the loan. The lender still has our $575 check. So another two weeks pass and we pay another $75 or we owe another $75 due to interest. So after four weeks, the amount owed slash paid is equal to $650. We roll over again in two weeks, we pay another $75 or we owe another $75 and we have owed $725. Already after six weeks, we owe slash we have already paid $725. This amount owed slash paid exhibits a linear pattern. It increases by the same amount over time. We can see that over time, every two weeks, we increase by $75. When we can graph this linear pattern, with our X being the week since the loan and the Y being the amount owed slash paid. 
Here we have our axes. Our X is our weeks since loan, and our Y is the amount owed slash paid. We can graph all of our points. And when we connect those points, we can see that this is a line. This is a linear pattern. What about people taking, taking seven cycles or 14 weeks to pay off their loans? Can we make a model that shows us what they pay without having to add 75 seven times? Talk about constructing a linear model. We can construct a linear model using this. Our amount paid slash owed is equal to the starting amount plus our interest. Let's fill in the pieces. We have our Y is our amount owed slash paid, our Y axis. And our starting amount, our Y intercept is $500. Plugging these in, we have our Y is equal to our amount paid slash owed and our starting amount is $500. So we have Y is equal to $500 plus interest. Our interest depends on the number of weeks. How much does interest climb per week? We can see that going from week one, week zero to two weeks in, we climb by $75 and we go over by two weeks. We want the dollar amount per week. We want our rise over our run, which we know is our slope. We have $75 per two weeks. We can say that that is equal to $37.50 per week. So our interest is $37.50 per week for X amount of weeks. Y is equal to 500 plus 37.5X. We can rearrange this to be Y is equal to 37.5X plus 500 to match our Y equals MX plus B, every mathematician's favorite one liner. Our slope is equal to 37.5 and our Y intercept, our B is equal to 500. Let's check this model the model that we've just created and see if it matches up with our line. Let's figure out the amount we pay if we pay off the loan in eight weeks. Plug in eight for X. So we have Y is equal to 37.5 times X plus 500. 37.5 times eight is 300 plus 500 is 800. And that's, uh, that lines up perfectly with um, our linear model, our linear graph model, consistent with the graph. Let's talk about making predictions. Uh, we, we can recall that according to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, over 60% of loans go through seven or more cycles. We have six or more rollovers, over 60% of these loans. How much will we owe after seven loan cycles? Seven loan cycles is 14 weeks. This is off the graph. So we're going to have to use our Y is equal to 37.5X plus 500. Where Y is equal to, again, the amount paid or owed and X is equal to the weeks um, of our loan. We can plug in 14 for our X, 37.5 times 14 is equal to 525. So already we're paying more than $500 in interest. Remember that we took out a loan of $500. So our interest is already greater than 100% of the loan that we initially took out. So 500 plus the 500, 525 plus the 500 is $1,025. How many weeks before the amount paid slash owed climbs to 2,450? This time we're working slightly backwards. Usually we're given our X and we're to figure out our Y. We're given the weeks of loan and we're asked to figure out how much we owe or paid. Now we're asked, we're given the amount paid slash owed and we're asked how many weeks will it take for the amount to climb to this. So we're going to plug in our uh, 2,450 for our Y and we're going to solve for X. So we're going to subtract. 500 from both sides to get 1,950 is equal to 37.5, giving us a little more room. We're going to divide both sides by 37.5, and we get 52 is equal to X. After 52 weeks, which is one year, the total amount paid slash owed is 2,450. Credit cards report their interest rates as annual percent rates, APR. This shows you that interest over a full year. Credit card APRs are usually from 12 to 30%. Using your previous answer, calculate the APR for the payday loan as a percent. So we know that after one year, 52 weeks, the amount increased from $500 to $2,450. Our initial loan was $500. So the, to calculate the total interest paid, we're gonna subtract $500 from our total amount that we have to pay of 2,450. So the interest that we paid is $1,950. As a percent of our initial loan, this is 
390%. Our APR is 390%. The payday loan agreement said you had a 15% interest rate. Is this misleading? Our 15% interest rate is for the two week cycle. We said that we pay $75 after two weeks. However, most people due to rollovers end up paying more than 15%. Also, our APR was 390%. Most credit card and loan companies um, report their, their loans in APR. They're more easily compared. So our credit card APR is 12 to 30% and our payday loan APR is 390%. So yes, a 15% interest rate may be misleading. As a result, many state governments require payday lenders to list their interest in APR. And that leads us to our discussion. Here's a map of Travis County, which contains the city Austin, Texas. You can see here the median incomes of various neighborhoods in the city and the locations of payday loan stores marked by the green dots. Discussion part A is, what trend do you see? Why do you believe this trend exists? And as a hint, think about what makes payday loans profitable using our previous examples. Discussion part B is, should the government limit interest rates? Why or why not? You'll be discussing these in class. And that's all for today. And we'll see you next time on Skew the Script. <laughs>